everybody, and thank you for joining us here today. My name is Marion Anderson, and I'm from Amazing People Worldwide. And today I'm here to show you how our Amazing People Schools program can be used to improve... Oh, my phone, sorry, can you hear me? Is that better, everybody? Yes. Sorry about that. How our Amazing People Schools resources can be used to support character development education through the power of storytelling about amazing people role models who have changed our world. So this is somebody we all know pretty well, Einstein. However, even if he is well known, it can sometimes be very difficult to unlock him as a person. That's where we can be. So I'd like to show you a little video here that will introduce you to the concept of amazing people and what I mean when I refer to amazing people so that you begin to understand what we do. And it's supposed to work when I click on it. Hang on. Here we go. Although I was known as a leading scientist, I felt that in our work and life, we needed a set of principles that guided our judgment. My suggestion is, try not just to achieve success, but rather try to become a person of value. Above all, learn from yesterday live for today, have hope, and a plan for tomorrow. The important thing is not to stop question. So poor Einstein froze there, however, <laughs> I hope you got the idea of what I mean when I refer to our amazing people who will help you get to um, familiarize yourself with our concept as we proceed. So we can ask ourselves, what made his great mind tick? Was his pathway to success always easy? What kind of skills and talents did he have to draw on to be successful and achieve the things that he achieved? After all, Einstein actually didn't get into higher education. He had to try harder, study harder, work harder. Hard to do that when you're of the opinion, as he was, that school lessons can sometimes be boring and that creativity and the imagination were far more important. He was actually fascinated with understanding how people thought and how they came to conclusions. He truly was a person of character. So character. What do we mean when we refer to a person of good character? That they work hard, they're reliable, they're not in trouble with the law, that they contribute to the community. So is this what character education in schools is about? We believe that character, citizenship, and cultural education is more about focusing on the psychological needs of the students, their personalities, and their ability to grasp their opportunities. This means dealing with the issues of growing up, ambitions, attitudes, relationships, and building confidence. So on that note, I'm going to show you just another little video. And this again introduces you to some of our amazing people and how they link with character education. I wrote a person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. Surround yourself with a team of people who believe in you and will help you achieve your dreams. Negative results are just what I want. They were as valuable to me as positive results if I could learn from them. I searched for new opportunities and developed my skills as a painter. My view was that you should not let other people control your existence. Identifying and meeting people who can improve your life is a key activity 
for your survival and development. Keep your focus and you will achieve a great deal. Anyone who stops learning, no matter what age they are, will quickly become old. In that last screen, that was our founder and author, Dr. Charles Mar Gerson. He has written really widely on the topic of character development education, and we do have some papers that we're happy to share with you. So come by our booth, number 78, and we can send those on to you if you'd like to know more about his writings on the topic. So here you'll see a screenshot. At the core of what we do sits an amazing people digital library. This houses hundreds of stories of life stories of amazing achievers who have changed our world. These are short format, 10 minutes to a story. They come in text and dramatized audio format, so great for the reluctant leaders, and this avatar is also available. So this is used um, by teachers to um, deliver stories across curriculum that link to topics and subjects. We are soon also, I just mentioned it briefly now, launching an Amazing People Schools new portal, which includes the library and a lot of our new character education development resources, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. In the meantime, some teachers that came back to us with some takeaway notes from having used the library said to us that they believed that their students could learn an awful lot of life lessons from the achievements of amazing people. These amazing scientists, musicians, and engineers, they were people of great character. They identified their talents, and then they developed them to be the best that they could be. They used their time well, they did not waste it. And in doing so, they have converted inputs to outputs that have stood the test of time. Now, if we can pass on those principles to our pupils, and if we can embed it in the teaching, then we're truly shaping up some amazing leaders of the future. How do we do this? Well, by embedding the character in the story content, which is cross-curricular, you get into the shoes of amazing people in a different way. You imagine being there, feeling their feelings, thinking their thoughts. <coughs> I love THs for an Irish person. I did it. <laughs> so it's about connecting the learning with the people, and this is where it's really been successfully used. So I'm hoping by the end of this session that I will have been successful in showing you how amazing people resources can be used to not only um, show how people can achieve great things, but to also work across the curriculum and support teachers in their every, every topic that is aligned with curriculum. I'll also hopefully be showing you how one of our schools, Meridian in London, has very, very successfully implemented this program. And now it's stuck. Just one touch. Sorry, guys. Technical issues. Let's try the mouse. Okay, sorry about that. So we worked with a variety of teachers from very, very different education backgrounds, from primary, secondary, special ed, and from institutions where they've had to work with students with learning difficulties of some sort or other. They've told us that the conversation around character development education is alive and well in their staff room discussions, in their mentoring and coaching sessions. They've told us that it's almost like an unwritten understanding between education professionals. They did, however, state that somewhere along the line, the end game became more important than the process of getting there. They asked questions like, are national test results more important than a student's ability to transition from, say, a small school to a larger school, from one teacher to many? Or is it not more important that students learn self-motivation, adaptability, critical thinking, to not give up or act out from a defense of a 
overwhelming social anxiety. So the need for character education, it's not rocket science. It's more probably a symptom of a fast-paced and slightly fractured global society where the final grade is held in all higher regard than the capacity to improve. So our teachers said there's all an opportunity here as educators to facilitate this in a much more mindful way. It worked. <laughs> okay, so in a little nutshell here, we have an overview of what the resources do. Obviously, we are here to inspire tomorrow's amazing people, Tubman's, Einstein's, Curie's, etc. The program lends itself to enabling schools to support their students to develop these characteristics and traits. They are inspired by these amazing people, as teachers have said back to us. This is a whole school approach, so it has a huge variety of learning application areas, from assembly, where you can base it on a topic or a theme or something to do with your school motto, right into the classroom where you can springboard into a subject that may traditionally be less interesting or engaging for students. And it also can be used for project work, research and extracurricular activities. It lends itself very, very well to the flipped classroom approach because of its focus on action learning. So another one of the things that is really outstanding about the, the resources is they can be linked to teachers creating their own programs. So we don't tell you what to do, you take this and you make it your own. And it can lend itself to any school character, behavior, or positive attainment program that may be in place by linking that to an amazing person story. And it can also very easily sit within any content management system in a school so that you can very, very easily measure engagement and measure impact, which is really important for all teachers. Something else that we all know pretty well, a tool is only as successful as the people using it. And this is a little case study that I want to show you. One of our schools in London, Meridian, has taken our resources and use them very, very well to enable and support their students to become amazing people of the future. <clears throat> Liz Bowen is the deputy head at Meridian High School in London. She has very, very kindly shared the following information with us, and she has also said that if people are interested in conversing with her and have more questions about how they've implemented this at their school successfully, she's more than happy to converse and I can facilitate an introduction. But first, let us get to know Meridian, situated in Croydon, in London. About 70% of the students get special premium grant funding. This is funding earmarked for students that have disadvantaged backgrounds or have problems in attainment. The majority of students come from white working class families and there's a growing number of migrant um, families, particularly from Eastern Europe, moving into the school. In 2014, it was classed as a failing school. A new head teacher then took over, so by March 2015, it actually was graded good for leadership and management, but there were quite a lot of other areas where they needed to improve overall. The challenges. We asked Meridian to identify what were the particular challenges they faced in their school community. Aspiration, expectation, and ambition, or lack thereof, are the key words that they said. These students felt they didn't know where they belonged in society. What could they contribute? Many of the Meridian families have students who never accessed university, so there was a huge gap in their cultural understanding of success. So these were the major challenges and changes they wanted to bring about in the school culture. They met our education team. Primarily the discussion was to be about how our amazing people digital library that I described earlier would support their PSHG program. During that meeting, there was a lot of aha moments. And this is when the Meridian administration and teaching team realized that they could use this not only for the PHSE program, but also to help support the development of the characteristics and the attributes that they wanted to instill in their students right around the school. So this would obviously narrow that gap that they had identified as one of their challenges in raising aspiration levels. So how did they go about doing this? They started out very, very slowly to introduce amazing people at school. 
Firstly, their, their motto, which was motivation, honor, and success, they started by linking an amazing people's story to each of these key words. For example, students could immediately understand why Louis Braille was so motivated to develop a Braille system. So they could relate to that in a better way than it was a word on a screen or a flag or a poster around the school. It gave a context. They continued to develop a list of attributes. They called it attributes, you can call it virtues, values, characteristics, skill sets. Every school has their own. They have their keywords, their motto, they have the things that they want their students to aspire to be and the skill sets they want them to develop. They linked every single one of these to amazing people's stories so that it gave it a coherent context and it made sense to them. So they started to understand what the words meant in the context of real life applications. These are, after all, real people, real life stories told in the first person, and they were immediately <coughs> engaged. This is a continuation of what they did in terms of um, attributes. One of the, um, not funny really, but amazing points that a student brought back to us was in relation to the Oscar Schindler story. A student, Liz Bowen, the deputy head, said to me, she said, one of our students actually made the statement that we never realized that achievement wasn't so straightforward. And he was relating to Oscar Schindler's alignment with the Nazi party. So in order for him to succeed in saving all those lives, he had to align himself with the Nazi party. So there was a moral dilemma there for him. So the student was just shaking his head and saying, I never realized that achievement could be so complex. And that it's not always that easy. It was a bit of an interesting takeaway point and showed that they were actually really looking at these stories in a way and taking into account some valuable life lessons. They then reinforced the message right around the school. They've had stations around the school where they've listed their attributes that are pertinent for them and their student body. They've linked them with amazing people of stories and amazing people of character. And they've actually really strongly, around the whole school, done quotes of the week, person of the week, run assemblies around them. And then what they went on to do was link it to their reward system. Now, most schools have a reward system at Meridian. They call it Meridian Miles. And they have four houses around the school to which student belongs in different color houses. What they did was they linked every attribute to their mild system. So when a student demonstrated achievement in a certain behavior or attitude, they were automatically rewarded miles. This created a great sense of community around the school and a sense of responsibility among students towards each other. At the end of every term, the miles were collated and obviously the house with the most miles won. In Meridian's case, they won a day trip. This really, really engaged the students because there was a carrot at the end of it for them. There was something they could achieve. So they were very, very, very engaged in demonstrating these type of um, attributes and these type of attainment across the whole school. Some of the interesting quotes that are up there on the screen from students are how they did realize that nothing is a given. People have to work hard. All of these amazing people had adversities, massive setbacks and that they did find that it was very easy to gain a lot of factual information from our resources in a very easy and engaging way. So the data, engagement and impact. I do apologize if you can't see properly, these graphs came in very little, but um, here you'll see what the total allocation of Meridian Miles was over a term. As you can see, they did really, really well in some areas of especially focus, motivation, and success. Also identifying areas that they may want to focus on next term, where they didn't do so well. They used um, the tools as well in careers classes. Like they asked the students to nominate an amazing person relevant to the career that you want to pursue. And they asked, having read that story, did you learn anything new? Yes, all of them did. Were you inspired? Absolutely. And most of them also thought that it was very important with role models. Um, Liz Bowen, the deputy head, said that one of the examples of something they did was they ran an assembly in March around Black History Month. 
So they asked the students in advance to, why don't you read the Harriet Tubman story and tell me what you think. Out of a group of 60 students, only two knew who Harriet Tubman was at that point. But when they came into assembly and they talked about Black History Month, and they ran quizzes and competitions around Harriet Tubman. Every student could answer the questions. And they got awarded, and they got miles, and they got prizes. And a couple of months later, they were actually really chuffed because it was announced that Harriet Tubman was going on the US $20 bill. So they felt that they knew more than any student in London about this amazing person. So yeah, that was just another little comment from them. So again, what's happened here is that they have raised aspirations. There is now a sense of cultural aspiration in school that just wasn't there before. It didn't exist. So this gap started to narrow. And they keep reinforcing it. They said achievement levels are rising. The school has been transformed. You see the house ties here on the side. These are the house colors that they belong to. So a few points on why it works, which may be of particular interest. We asked Meridian to summarize in a nutshell why it really worked well for them. They said the fact that they could tailor it to suit themselves and suit their own school community was of very much um, particular success. They didn't have to invest in any software or any further um, equipment or resources. It fit in with their school content management system, which is SIMS in the UK. Our team was with them all along the way and listened and helped them to make it their own, supported them in any which way they needed. The fact that they implemented it really slowly helped them to bring all of the teachers on board. Slowly but surely, teachers saw that they could use it in the science class, bring Marie Curie into the science class, bring Thomas Edison into the innovation room, bring Coco Chanel into the retail class. So for them, Springboarding that into assemblies for topics or themes also made them realize how long-term and sustainable this could be as a program if they embedded the ethos of amazing right around the school. They said it was just so easy to implement and how well it engaged students. One of the other things they mentioned was it put people from before into perspective today. So for example, every student has a mobile phone. They pointed out that in that mobile phone, there are several features that wouldn't be there unless Thomas Edison had invented them. You've got light, you've got battery, you've got sound recording, you've got mood recording. And they went, oh, who was this Thomas Edison guy? Wow. And he failed more times than he succeeded. So it gives them a sense of confidence in the fact that if you fail at first, try again. It's also Marie Curie. The science classroom, sometimes students just shiver in the books going in to learn about radium and all of that. You bring Marie Curie into the classroom and you ask them, have you ever had an x-ray? Do you know anybody who's had to be treated for a tumor or for cancer? This is the lady who brought us all of these fantastic inventions that has changed and shaped our world. I mentioned briefly earlier on, for some of you who may have visited our booth, um, our Amazing People Digital Library, because it's being used so well to promote character and raise aspirations, has been linked with every school's character or behavior system that we've started working with. So it's mushroomed. It's mushroomed into this huge concept, an amazing thing that we've now actually decided to marry all of the resources together and we're launching an Amazing People Schools Character Education Pilot in the next couple of months, late September, early October. We're really looking to get some Australian schools um, online for the pilot. It's totally free. It will help us to tweak and develop the end product, which has already mushroomed from what teachers have told us they're doing with the resources. So. It's becoming a very amazing thing, and please pop by our booth number 78 if you'd like to register your school for this pre pilot. Very briefly, once again, where it kind of fits right across the whole school. You can use it in assemblies, to springboard into topics in a classroom. Obviously, it can link with your character education and behavioral improvement system. 
It has a great place in careers because all of these people have had great careers in one way or another and help people understand how they can aspire to better things. And it could be linked to a school reward system. So on that note, that's everything from me. I've been given the nod here that I've got to show you two minutes. So what I suggest, if anybody has questions and like to come and chat with us, we're at Booth 78. There's a team of us there, three, Linda, Janine, and myself. We've got some exciting things happening. Obviously, we've got the library at a 50% discount this weekend. We've got the pilot opportunity that we'd love to get some schools on board doing with us. And we've got Einstein and Queen Elizabeth there who would like to have their photograph taken with you. And um, we also have a mini iPad up, um, which we're offering for anyone that can come and guess who some of our amazing people are. So on that note, thank you very much and um, wish you a great continued expo.